In the paper F3 exam, you might be asked to define the elements of financial statements. Um, the elements of financial statements that we find in the statement in the financial position are basically assets, liabilities, equity, and in the statement of comprehensive income, we also have income and gains. Okay, there are five elements of financial statements, and the definition here is very, very important, both for the exam and for application, frankly, throughout your entire career. An asset may seem obvious, but an asset is something that's controlled by an entity and is going to give an inflow of future economic benefits. Now, let's give an example of this. If you buy a car, let's say you're a taxi operating company, then that's an asset. It's a car that you control. Um, and clearly, it's going to give you future economic benefit because you can then charge people for rides and thing. That means the definition of an asset pretty straightforwardly. When you get to things like intangible assets and things like website costs, for example, it becomes altogether more judgmental when something's an asset or whether it's an expense. Because of the fact that an asset is something that's going to be controlled by you and give an inflow of benefit, it has to pass both of those tests. That means that the most difficult one, in fact, in practice, tends to be the future economic benefits. Because let's say you spend a large amount of money on on um, a website as a marketing tool, well, you hope that it's going to give you an inflow of benefit, but you really can't be that terribly sure. For that reason, accounting standards would say that that has to be an expense. Okay, a liability is something you'll come up again and again. Okay, a present obligation. Now, an obligation is something that you just cannot afford, that cannot possibly avoid. Compare that with intention. Now, this is going to come up quite a lot more at paper um, F7 and P2 in ACCA. But uh, you will need to know this definition for the F3 exam as well. So we have a present obligation, something that you just can't avoid. Now that is either what's called a legal obligation or a constructive obligation. As far as we're concerned, just look for something that you just can't avoid by any means at all. And it's going to give you an outflow of resources. Um, in other words, it's going to cost you some cash to settle. Now this is, for example, a liability as a provision. A provision is an example of something which is a liability. You're not quite sure how much it's going to cost you. You're not quite sure maybe when you're going to pay the money, but you know you are going to pay some money. Another example we'll look at later on in paper F3 are accruals. Okay, and accrual is something that you have an obligation to pay for. Um, you probably make a bit of a guess of how much it's going to be, but you know that some money will be leaving the company. Compare that with a prepayment. A prepayment is something where you've paid up front, let's say a balance on a prepaid uh, mobile phone, Card, uh, account or something, and that's going to give you um, a control because you own your mobile phone number. You know you get to use that prepayment; other people don't, and it gives you some sort of economic benefit in the future. You've already paid for it. Okay, equity is a definition that um, may seem relatively obvious here. It's basically assets less liabilities. So if anybody owns their own home, for example, they talk about having equity, equity, or if they are unlucky, negative equity in the value of their home, which is basically the market value of the asset less the liability to the bank to pay for the loan. It's, it's a common term in everyday use when we're talking about house ownership. And it's the same way, it really is exactly the same way in paper F3 and the accounting standards. It's assets less liability. Now, depending um, on the type of the entity that we're looking at, this might be a, just capital, it might be called partner's current account, it might be capital and reserves for a limited company. We get it defined in different terms depending on the type of business, but all of them are literally just the net assets of the business. Net assets, equity, equal exactly the same thing. Okay, on the next page, we take a look at the other two elements of financial statements. Elements of financial statements are things from which the financial statements are put together. Financial statements being things like balance sheet, otherwise known as statement of financial position, and statement of comprehensive income, otherwise known as profit or loss. Okay, income essentially is increase in net assets. We define income as anything that increases the recognised net assets of the business. Okay, in other words, increase in economic benefits. Okay, that's the word used by the standard. Think of it just as an increase in net assets. Anything that is going to make you appear richer is income. Think about it in your own personal personal life. If you get some money paid into your bank account, your bank account gets bigger. Income is the exp explanation of where it came from. And expense is the opposite. It's just a decrease in net assets. The only example that's different to this within paper F3 is if you've got any transaction with the owner of the business. If you're an owner of the business and the net assets of the business go up because you've put in extra capital, you haven't, as the owner of the business, got any richer or poorer. All you've done 
has moved money from a personal bank account to a business bank account, that therefore overall hasn't made you any richer, it's not increased your net assets as such. If you get uh, a withdrawal from the business, a dividend, if it's a limited company, then all you've done is taken money out of the business bank account, which you own entirely, into your personal bank account, so overall your net asset worth hasn't changed either. So income and expenditure are basically an increase or a decrease in net assets, except any transaction with a shareholder, which in the paper, case of the paper F3 exam, basically is going to be capital introduced or withdrawals, otherwise known as otherwise known as dividends, taken out of the business.